เนี่ยช่องเกณฑ์สิกิตินิจังแต่นักวิทยาเกี่ยวกับเนี่ยช่องวิทยาสิบาลาอีตัวอ่าจะมีตัวใช้จูดูอ่าคงเช่นกับเ
ก็ปุ๊บมั่วหลุดได้ชีก็สั่นเป๊ะจนน่ะเด็กก็ซิเมงจ่าไอ้ย้อนเลยยาย้อนท้องเด็กเป๊ะหนอเสียไอ้ซ
sở đầu là sở đầu chở mình xài tài chế này rồi bây giờ cô sẽ xả bao với tiền ô có từng xài có du lịch trà này hay tiền xe một nọ này nè còn thấy khác cứ cô sẽ xả cả các khe bên trên này nè chế tài chế tiền nhớ cả ông ta nhớ tàu ít từng xài cả chỉ xe lên nó mà lúc vừa chỉ lên nó mà nữ có tu lý trà thế có nhiều có sổ nữ lý trà nhưng mà lý trà thế tiền từ này có khe mình chỉ sẽ có ông nè cái hai có hai cho nữ lý trà rồi thế ôm còn tài chế của hai chỗ này tiền của ông nè lo của cô chỉ cho cho nữ lý trà đó xí mà cú mà cú vẫn dạy tuôn năng à tiệt cú vẫn khóc khóc là cho anh xài ta rồi đi theo à cú vẫn khóc khóc nữa một cái từ lọ cú vẫn khóc khóc nữa ta chỉ hay cho khóc khóc nữa thế khó ba ba lọ cú ba chấp lời họ khóc lọ cú vẫn khóc nữa cú vẫn tuôn nữa ta ra ta rồi hay tiệt vô chủ uo linh non linh non thế linh dọn khó rồng về dù dù chùa uo linh đạo sư ta chỉ mà cho lúa tôi tết thì nó chỉ uo linh cú hay có chơi khóc lời bỏ đi cha lọ nhớ trong đời tuổi lại và nhà nó lợi dân cho xã lợi thiết sư à, dù ở nhà không đi trả lời do tiền lợi chỉ cho xã thiết lợi chỉ cho cho chỉ có không trả lời dân chỉ chỉ ba luật thứ tiếp. And I would like to celebrate our friend Botao. It's such a beautiful ceremony that you have with this tying of the string, and in this particular occasion, that it not only helps us to join in the celebration but also to connect you with us. And so if you just raise your hand a bit with all those strings, <laughs> I can bet that, I can bet you that none of us would be able to break that like we would be able to break this. And this is a very powerful statement because it's not just a community celebration, this is a political appointment. She is serving a political role in a political institution relating to political entities like the defense, the Pentagon, the Department of Energy, the Department of Education, all of which that we have an interest in. So when she calls or when she writes to the top leaders, they need to know that behind her is an army of people. So if you have not already done so, follow her on Twitter. <laughs> friend her on Facebook because when she writes they're going to google her name and they're going to find out how many friends she has how many followers she has and it's an important but I bring out a publication just recently called chai.news and I posted the story about her appointment and you know how many people read that article from a small publication that just started 5,000, more than 5,000 people read that article. Bao hệ tu tin nhanh ngay nữ chị nhà cả đời tu sau bệnh nữa. Ok. Đã chỉ bếp bỏ hệ tiền nữa hồn nữ tôn tệ hình nữa thế. Bao cụ hệ đó có hệ tiền. Sao chị chẳng gọi thế. Ok. Rồi thì ơ, bao hệ xin chí ư chị lúc còn hồ của Coalition of Asian American Leaders. Lúc còn hồ nó hay lúc còn hồ là chú cho nên cho tù cho tín hình ngày tấn đa nó đi đặt trực quầy ưu thế Chỉ nhớ là cho hay tín hình ngày tín hình tấn đa là nhớ ok Nó sẽ còn tế bá chú sẽ sẽ bế bỏ khó tập bế cho tín hình Vì hệ tế bế bỏ thì bế mô rồi tự bỏ thì nó nhớ là chú sĩ mà Mì càng đó chỉ là cho bỏ hệ tế bế cho tín hình tấn đa xe Tế thổ không được rong là để chú sĩ mô là bế Tế thổ nó lo là để chú cả là xe bế Chị cụ sáu ông bao cháu ông bao nhiêu tự tin hành nghề kia hô lửa hẹn chấp lời đó bé Nhiều tuổi bé mà bé hợp cho ai là nhóm đại sứ tế sĩ Nơi hợp tuổi của kia hô lửa xa hẹn như hợp bác Thank you so much for founding the Coalition of Asian American Leaders And then, you know, I wanted to say just a couple words and maybe I'll say this in English Bao is a very special person to me um, I have a lot of titles and I even have doctor in front of my name now, but I met Bo when I was just a nobody. <laughs> I had just graduated from college and uh, then graduate school and uh, she believed in me. And I believed in her and together the two of us thought we should have an organization. <laughs> uh, and not really an organization because we didn't really know what we were doing. Um, but you know, I think in, in each other we recognized that there was something special. And the something special is that Bo has really good ideas. And she's an amazing supporter and enabler of people. 
and we've both been that way. So I'm the, I'm the kind of person who, even if I'm far away from Bo for a long, long time, we, we just reconnect automatically. Like she was in DC for a long time in New York and we just reconnected. But I have to say that that's not, the, that's not my personal experience with Bo. That's everybody's relationship with Bo. Do you feel the same? Yes. Yeah. Bo, it is what makes you so special that you have the capacity to love and you have the capacity to care and you see the potential endlessly in our communities and in people and for that we all thank you because you know what your time has come so you're going to be a lot more visible and uh, we're so proud of you uh, so, thank you, my friend, and congratulations. And we all know that one of Bo's greatest assets is that she's a great listener. Um, she isn't one that likes to hear herself talk, and she gains her intelligence from, from listening to others. And that's really what, you know, she's taken to the White House. She is taking all the things that she's heard from other people, and especially old people. Bo love, old people love to talk to Bo. <laughs> my, my dad tells Bo stories that no one else has ever heard of. And I pretend like I'm asleep and I listen, but uh, he's talking to Bo. And um, so she's a great listener, and she just absorbs everything in, and that's how she gains her intelligence. And, um, which, which brings me to my next point is, you know, everyone was congratulating today, and I'm like, what did I do? You know, what, what did I do? I, I appreciate it, but I really didn't do anything. And then it hit me, I was like, I may or may not be the source of all of Bo's great ideas. Right? If, if you've ever had an aha moment where Bo just said something, that might have come from me. But, um, anyway, so, I'm going to keep this short, so up, up next is Bo, and so without further ado, let's, let's give a round of applause to Bo. Thank you. I am a scripted person because, you know, I um, am not good off the cuffs, so, uh, so Gajua, you are right, I am prepared. Um, I may change a few things. Um, so first, friends and family, let me just apologize to my elders um, because I will be mostly speaking in English. Um, thank you for being here. Um, Uh, so I want to thank those of you who are here today because I know Sunday is a very difficult time to take away not just from uh, your individual schedules but for those of you who go to church for those of you who have children for those of you who really just want to relax it's not an easy time to take off and so I really appreciate your time being here many people ask me why we are not inviting the governor why we are not inviting the mayor why we are not inviting much more important people to be at this event and I think my friends know me and we said, look, this is really about inviting people that um, love me 
and want me to be successful. And you have been with me through the journey, and you, some are old friends and some are new friends, but all of you are people that I count among um, those who really want me to both be healthy, well, and also um, to be able to um, succeed. So you, I count you among that uh, close uh, group of people. So thank you so much for today. To those who've traveled far to be here, I'm honored by your presence and shocked as uh, Peggy witnessed. I, I've only cried a few times today. <laughs> to those who change your schedule so that you can be here, I'm deeply moved to share your time. As an introvert, you, can, you might know how I feel. I mean, who needs a four-hour event about themselves? <laughs> it's all too much. I feel like digging into a hole right now. <laughs> but as a daughter, wife, mother, and auntie, friend, colleague, I'm going to attempt to say a few words and share my feelings and thoughts about this occasion. So first, let me say that I'm humbled by the planning team. Can we just give them an applause? by the effort, care, and resources that you mustered together to put this beautiful event together. I don't even really know how many people are involved because they won't tell me. I just know that there were many, and I simply want to say thank you. Or what you know. The overwhelming support of my appointment to the President's Commission on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders has been very humbling. I'm honored to serve, of course. It's my job. But what's followed in terms of community outpouring of encouragement and support has been nothing short of remarkable. It's a great reminder for me that we are indeed Americans as much as we are home. And in this democracy, we are needed. Many more of us are needed. We need to be able to share our histories. We need to be able to share our dreams. And we need to be able to share our skills. Someday, we should all be celebrating the first Asian American president. Today, as you all have celebrated me, I want to remind you that there are many who have come before me, many courageous women and men who have paved the way. This includes Hmong and other Asian Americans who fought passionately on the side of justice and the equity. Each step someone took before to win civil rights, human rights, and democratic rights has been essential so that I can do what I'm doing now. There are so many individuals like that in this room today. For example, my dear friend Gai Ying Yang. I <laughs> just pause because I don't want to cry. We've already cried, but I might cry again. Um, for those of you who don't know, Gaying was is one of the first young women of my generation, that means we were born overseas and came as refugees, to visibly use her skills and knowledge and passion to lead locally and nationally. And I'm a little bit of a stalker because I think I followed her uh, around a bit. Um, first, I took the job as her associate director at the Women's Association of Hmong and Lao, and then followed her to DC when we took different leadership positions at national advocacy organizations. So when I think about generosity and love for community, I think of you. Um, so thank you for leading. And then um, Judge Gao Cheng Bo, who's going to come up. For those of you who don't know, um, Judge Cheng Bo is somebody that never gives up on her dreams. She returned to law school in her 40s and refused to give up on the idea that she was needed on the bench. She tried to get appointments, um, and when that didn't work, she turned to all of us. Right? the community to say, hey, we need people like us. And she got elected. And Gail, I'm so proud to be your friend. Um, 
Micah has already spoken, but she's somebody that is not just passionate about community, but she leads with smarts. And I've really appreciated it because I feel like so many people are so much smarter than me, and I'm just so lucky to be in your presence because you all make me smarter. But Michael and I have been through a lot of different things together, and she's always shown up, even when it was just the two of us. So I thank you, Michael, for always being there and for listening to every one of my crazy ideas just as much as I listen to your crazy ideas. <laughs> I want to also thank Kong and Kaliher, who are just a phenomenal couple, and really, you are my parental role models. Every day, Dennis and I talk, and I would say, what do you think Kong and Kali would do? <laughs> you both lead with passion, and you really try to exemplify in that, your, in, that, in that in your family, and have been great supporters, and I so admire you admire you and thank you for your friendship. I also want to thank Peggy who has already um, spoken. She's somebody that um, I've also stalked a little bit. <laughs> when I was in DC and was trying to do um, good national policy work but also still very um, passionate and concerned about injustice and um, in particular thinking about gender. Um, Peggy was somebody who was already, um, you know, had so much experience, and I just thought, how can I get in the presence of this woman? So I kind of, you know, threw myself and at her and said, I want to participate. Invite me to this thing, <laughs> um, and, and things like that. But Peggy, your conviction to social justice and community, and always doing the right thing, and reminding us that we are not good leaders unless we are leading with community. I also want to highlight my friend Gajua, who is up here, and is she's very good at off the cuff. <laughs> but Gajua is the definition of never giving up on community. She reminds me that even when people are, have made mistakes in their life, they are still part of our community. And so, although we have very different personalities, we've been able to do a lot together. And I so treasure your friendship, Gajo. And last but not least, I really want to thank um, Dunza. Dunza and I grew up going to house parties together <laughs> in high school. This is when, you know, we, we grew up and it's like we were poor, but we didn't know we were poor. And we took a dollar, my sisters and I, we would go to a candy store and have them change it so that it was all pennies. So that way we could pay for the bus for all four of us to go to a house, house party. Because if you had big bills, then you, you know, we didn't have enough for everyone. So another life hack. <laughs> um, but Tudor is just one of these phenomenal people who has the capacity to take the worst in people and to turn it into something positive. I have seen him fight with people, and he will listen, but he will put you in your place. And I really treasure that about you, Tudor. And he will always show up if you ask him to. He was at my wedding. He <laughs> emceed my wedding, <laughs> um, as he is here today. But I know that you fundamentally get social justice and have always been there. And I thank you for that. I really appreciated the demonstration of the young people today. And I say young because I think I'm slightly older than Bao Fi and, you know, Mili and Se Mukta and all the young In Harmony folks. And so, in our community, when you're in your 40s, you're an elder. So I'm totally going to claim that. <laughs> but our young people are so talented. They're able to articulate and tell our stories in a way that I never could. 
And we need to be thoughtful about not just having talking heads, but having people who can share that experience. And so all of you moved me today, and I hope that we will fully embrace all of your talents in the future, and that we can continue to support you as you put out your art to the world, not just for us, because we don't, we want to see that representation, because, but because you are able to share with the world our experience and the gifts and talents that we have, and also ideas for problem solving. So thank you. So I know I have missed many. I have my aunt and uncle who, um, I don't know why, but trusted me with um, babysitting their kids when I was in second grade. Uh, I have my cousins who are always here for me and they show up and they decorated this place and we can have a feast and play game and argue and all of those things and I love you guys so much. My siblings who are my village, if you were not there for me, I would not be able to do what I'm doing. I see so many faces in here that I owe a debt of gratitude to. So, I want to thank each and every one of you. As some of you have heard me say before, I came to this country at the age of six with my family as a refugee child. As I reflect back on this, the 40th anniversary of the Vietnam and secret wars in Southeast Asia, I'm keenly aware that people my age were the most vulnerable during that time. Without the protection and care of our elders, we would not be here. So we need to continue to remember that they brought us here. Thank you to all of our parents. My parents believed in the credo of we want our children to be better than us, and we are better off. America has been a great place of opportunities, but it's not just about opportunities, it's what we do with those opportunities. I know this because I've visited the country of my birth and I've seen what it could have been for me. As I continue to work closely with community and to listen to the issues, I am not so sure that our children will have better futures than we, and I think that's scary. For example, did you know that in the API population, it's the native-born population where we have the highest growth of poverty. That's scary. And even though this is the first decade where we have more U.S.-born children, uh, Hmong children, than foreign-born children in the Minnesota school system, an over -major overwhelming majority are still classified as English learners. These are not easy data points to understand or issues to get to know, but they demand our attention because our community and country's vibrancy depends on it. I don't want to be cynical because I see this as an opportunity to bring those issues and voices to the table, but I'm a believer that we also have to understand and acknowledge our challenges so that we can find the best solutions. But we also must be centered on community. So today I'm grateful to be surrounded by so many of you who are problem solvers and thought leaders and practitioners. You are celebrating me, but I'm so privileged and grateful to be working alongside each of you. So let's continue to do good work together so that we can make this country great for everyone. And as we close out today, I really, again, just want to thank my husband and Emmy because they put up with me and I put up with them a little bit. <laughs> so that we can really um, create this whole village that succeeds. And as I take on this one additional role, it's just for a few years, Dennis, I also want to um, um, thank my family and really my siblings because they are like my parents to my daughter. Um, and again, thank you to the planning team. I'm truly humbled and I, I'm going to figure out who you all are eventually, right? You know that, right? So, so I know you don't want um, me to say all the names and things like that, but 
Um, this would not have happened without you. So thank you so much. All right, so this is from the city of St. Paul proclamation, and there's a seal. And so listen up now. <laughs> Whereas Ms. Bo Tao Yurabe was born in Laos on May 18, 1973, and at the age of three, made the month-long trek with her family by foot to a Thai refugee camp in 1976. And whereas, Bo and her family came to the United States in 1979 as refugees, settling first in Chicago, then Wisconsin, and finally Minnesota in 1986 so that her father could attend vocational school upon settling here. Bo and her family lived on St. Paul's east side where Bo graduated from Johnson High School and received a B.S. in Family Social Science from the University of Minnesota. And whereas Bo was a founding member of the Minnesota chapter of the National Asian Pacific American Women's Forum and has spent the greater part of her life serving the Asian Pacific American community, with a special focus on the well-being of women and girls. And whereas, at the age of 23, Bo became the executive director of the Women's Association of Hmong and Lao and helped found the first sexual assault program in the country for Hmong women and co-founded Hmong Women Achieving Together Two years later, she became executive director of Hmong National Development in Washington, D.C., and successfully advocated for the extension of the Hmong Naturalization Act for the resettlement of over 15,000 remaining refugees at Wat Tham Brakok. And whereas on October 2nd, 2015, President Obama appointed Bo Tao Yurabe as commissioner to the President's Commission on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, and her family, friends, and colleagues are celebrating Bo's achievements, confident that she will continue to use her knowledge and experience to benefit the St. Paul community. Now, therefore, I Christopher B. Coleman, Mayor of the City of St. Paul, do hereby proclaim Sunday, November 1, 2015, to be Bo Tao Yurabe Day. In the City of St. Paul, in witness whereof, I have hereon to set my hand and cause the seal of the city of St. Paul to be affixed this first day of November in the year 2015, Christopher B. Coleman, Mayor. Now we move on to the governor's proclamation. See, it's bigger. <laughs> and whereas on October 2nd, 2015, President Obama appointed Bo Tao Yurabe Commissioner to the President's Commission on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, now therefore I, Mark Dayton, Governor of Minnesota, do hereby proclaim Sunday, November 1, 2015, as Bo Tao Yurabe Day. In essence, I think Bo's speech kind of represents what the what today is. And uh, of course, knowing her, she's so humble. She always makes it about other people. But this is truly a Bo. Not only are you a great human being, but you are part. You represent a great movement. And cheers to being a voice for those who are without voices, 
to fighting for those who are less fortunate than ourselves, to sharing our history and our dreams, to honoring champions who served and paved the way before us, to drawing strength from our similarities as well as celebrating our diversity, to creating a better future of fairness, inclusiveness, and equality where we all matter. Congrats, we love you both. Yeah.